Okay, so now I've got Facebook rolling, got that ready to go. Uh, and we of course have Zoom already up and running. So, and the room's starting to fill up. We still got a lot more people probably gonna show up based on what was registered. Uh, but you guys were here on time and we know your every minute of your day is valuable. So we don't wanna waste your time. Uh, so let me kind of first introduce myself. Uh, my name is Craig Grant. Uh, for those of you guys who do not know me, um, I am an international speaker, instructor, and coach on just about everything technology, anything geeky, that's marketing, cybersecurity, uh, anything kind of tech that's related to the real estate world. I cover it and I speak on it all over the industry. Of course, these days, a whole lot more virtual than it used to be. Um, and um, with me, I have Dennis Roche, who is the CEO. Uh, is it co-CEO? Where I know it's you and your wife run it's, the company Yeah, together. it's my wife and I. So co-founder is what we call ourselves. Okay. But, uh, yeah. You got to be careful when it's a husband and wife running a company together. You know what I mean? Well, especially when she does the hard work <laughs> of the tech and I do true. the easy stuff of the talking. So Very, very true. Uh, so he is the, a co-founder, along with his wife, Julie, um, of Burbio, which is a really cool product um, that we actually did a webinar together a few months ago. Uh, and, you know, Dennis and I have kind of kept in touch because one, I love the product and I've kind of promoted it to many realtors in my classes and different events before, because uh, it really fits into what I preach in the marketing world, which is always kind of being your local expert, like really connecting with your community. And their product does it really, really well. But one of the other cool reasons why I wanted to pull Dennis back in for another webinar um, is, you know, during the pandemic, we've all had to pivot. We've all had to, oops, forgot, I forgot to record. There we go. Uh, but we've all had to pivot and change things up a little bit. Uh, and what Dennis uh, and his team, I guess, really, it's his wife, really on the coding side, uh, have done is they really have kind of pivoted in a different direction, which ties into your core product, uh, but really smartly of just how you guys are tracking things and events around the country and how COVID has really kind of impacted those. Uh, and again, it really does dovetail back right back into own your local community, really being involved and providing, being that source of information. So uh, Dennis, why don't you, first of all, just say hi to everybody, kind of. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Yep. Um, so why don't you um, kind of give him quickly, I don't know, I know you have a little slide deck, give him in a few minutes, but just give him kind of a, the, you know, the yeah, so, foot so level. So Burbio is a six-year-old company and mm -hmm. uh, we started our business because my wife and I, we have four children and we live in a town of about 11,000 people. Mm -hmm. And a few years ago, it was, we were talking about how hard it was to figure out what goes on in our town and that, yeah. that we did everything manually. So what we ended up doing was building a technology that pulls in public school, government, library, community calendars and keeps the information automatically up to date. When it changes on the government site, it changes on Burbio and we distribute the information to partners. So we think of it as like an AccuWeather except for community events. Yep. If you wanted to put the weather on your website, you wouldn't go hire a weatherman or you wouldn't look out the window and start typing it in every day. You would get a data feed. Now, yep. most real estate agents are not putting the weather, today's weather on the real estate uh, uh, site. But what with us, we can provide you a data feed that gives you everything that's going on in your community that you can use to showcase to potential buyers um, and obviously also to potential sellers in the community. So you can do all sorts of things with it. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a way to automate it. We fell into it. It started with me cursing on the couch about how the school <laughs> was changing things. And yep. I had to go look at their stupid website because the emails had all this other crap in it. And that part of the world's actually gotten worse. So <laughs> we, we, work with, we work with big companies like Microsoft uses us for Office 365. We work with broadcasters. I'll show you a little map in a moment. We actually, so investors now look at our information because with COVID, people are trying to figure out where things are physically happening. Yep. So we're very excited to be here today. Okay, great. Yeah, by the way, you already got a question, but we haven't even gotten to the product or how it works or anything yet. But uh, Gian just asked in the chat room, uh, do you build a scraper or given permission to receive their API? So, so should I share my screen uh, and start in? You think? Sure, yeah, and or, we don't have to tackle that question right now. Okay, but I mean, yeah. I know you're going to. So, so we product, use but. we we use what are called calendar feeds. Okay, if you go to a school website, you'll see this little thing. It looks like calligraphy. It's public. It's completely allowed. Residents, some that residents in theory can use these things to sync to their Google or Apple calendar. Nobody does. Yep. Uh, and some of them don't even work. So we pull that. We also use what are called data parsers that keep things up to date, but it's all public information. And what an agent would do is we would provide you, and I'll talk about this in a minute, we'll provide you the information customized to your community. It's very super local. 
Yeah. So, yeah, and yes, we have an API. So we have an API that you can pull the information from. For the most part, we don't pull the information that we pull from public websites. We don't use APIs on that side. We do it mm -hmm. with what are called calendar feeds. So yep. that's a very technical question, so. Yeah, <laughs> that's our crowd, right? We, we we try to pull in every level of tech into RTI. And, yeah, and so that's how Mike, when Microsoft, we have 80,000 public schools on our data, in our database and Microsoft pulls from our API. Just yeah, that. yeah. And by the way, just to kind of give you guys an idea, Dennis is more the sales marketing guy. Um, <laughs> his wife, Julie, is the tech. <laughs> so I do a good imitation until someone asks me a really technical question. Yep. Yeah. No. So, um, yeah, but and uh, again, one of the things that, and I mentioned it kind of quickly about the pivoting um, is like most of what Burbio focuses on, which you're going to show them when you get into the presentation, at least pre-COVID, was having a crazy active community calendar for where, exactly where you live on your site. Um, of live events you can go to and things like that. Uh, but as most of you guys probably know, most live events have either completely stopped or cut back a lot. Uh, and that's where the whole pivot came into play because what you guys have done pretty brilliantly and got tons of traction on is um, you're still doing events and you're still doing stuff like that, but you're also tracking other things uh, that have been picked up by the media, such as school closures and things like yep. that. So. Do you want to kind of speak to that yeah, for a moment? We, well, we, first of all, we have virtual events. And as many of you have probably experienced, there's plenty of community organizations now in your town that are supplementing what they would normally do with virtual events or substituting in some cases. So we have all of that. Right. We also have the institutions themselves. As you know, people, uh, this isn't going to last forever. I nope. would say it's going to ease out in the spring. And then by next fall with various things happening, we'll probably be back to a little bit of normal. Yep. Um, but in the meantime, there's virtual events. And when people move to a community, they want to show off. They want to see what's going on in that town. And, and, and the other thing you can do is, and this is important, actually, is that during COVID, uh, these community groups need as much support as possible. And you can show that to them. But yes, we've been featured on CNBC, The Wall Street Journal, USA Today, Axios, because we're the only company in the country that's tracking what's going on locally. Right. And so when reporters want to know, is a certain part of the country coming back to life or not, we get the call. Yep. Uh, so that's part has been a lot of fun. And certainly with schools, we know a lot about as well. So, yep. Cool. All right. So um, why don't you, um, I mean, I'll kind of give you the reins um, if you want to kind of take over and either show your slide deck or sh I know you have some websites you want to show people um, yep. and what you, hold your questions. You can ask questions as much as you want about the product and everything, but he's going to go and cut through it all of what they were doing pre pandemic and still through it and some of the new stuff as well. Great. So just high level. And I think everybody knows this community information is very important part of the home buying process and understanding that COVID has changed the nature of community life. Uh, it's still very, very important. And home buyers want to work with agents who are experts. Mm -hmm. um, and marketing community information can serve a variety of purposes. Obviously, it helps you engage home buyers' interest in your business. It demonstrates your understanding of the marketing. But also, if it's used a certain way, it can also build relationships with people who are in your community who might be sellers one day because you are promoting and supporting everything that goes on in the town. The problem with that, and we have spoke, spoken to thousands of agents, is that there's really no way to get the information. Uh, just like I was cursing on a couch, dropping lots of F-bombs, given my New Jersey heritage. Uh, <laughs> you know, if, if you're an agent and you want to show off what's going on in a town, it's very expensive. I'm uh, sorry, it's time consuming. It's expensive because you have to pay someone to do it. It's not complete. You can't keep track of changes. And when you share it, congratulations, you've just promoted someone, some other media site's website or whatever. So it's really kind of sloppy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's no way to do this. So Basically, what we are is a community events platform. I rec I said earlier, we're like AccuWeather. Think of us as someone, and we go really, really deep in your community. Yeah. We have everything, and that's really important. Mentioned earlier, we've been covered in all these different uh, uh, resources around the country, uh, media sites, and, and even more than this. Here's a funny story. CBS reached out to us uh, last week. Uh, two weeks ago, and they said, how many kids are in person in school in America? And we know that because we track school openings as opposed to virtual. So we gave them the number. The next day, I wa kind of watched the news, CBS, I taped it. It was a bunch of interviews. I was, I, I couldn't figure out, I didn't see a reference. I said to the producer, I said, listen, I know this stuff doesn't get used. 
what did it get used? No big deal, you know, because the press they ask you questions and they don't always include it. And she said, Oh, yeah, yeah, your data was used in a question to Dr. Fauci. And I was like, I went back and watched, I had skipped through the That's interview. Cool. <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, I was thinking, you know, if I knew it was for him, I would have asked him some other questions right. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so someone asked earlier, our information is bulletproof accurate. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have, if it changes on the website, it changes on Burbio. And my wife runs our tech. Um, she has a, uh, she was a math major in college. We built this tech that keeps everything up to date. And when it changes on the source site, it changes on Burbio. And as I referenced, it's really local. Yeah. When somebody thinks about events on the internet, they might think of Eventbrite, which is a fine service, but at any given point, there may be one Eventbrite event happening in your town of 20,000 people every three weeks. And that's right. non-COVID. In COVID, yeah, this is down to the Lions Club, the local churches. We know a lot about this. We have a team of people who look at this information. I'm going to try and see if I can uh, get out here. Uh, yeah, and, and by the way, if I could clarify, while you're doing that, let me clarify also, when he's talking about it being like really local, um, he's not talking about like, you know, if you live in a major city, here's a calendar for Orlando. Um, he's talking about you can have a pretty chock full event calendar, no matter how small of an area you live in, like for each individual town in your market, like it's pretty incredible how much how many events and how much detail they have on those events in just about any town in america yeah so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you now um on the slide i'm going to take over the screen again and just show you some examples of of all the kind of stuff that we have so this is an example can you see uh the the remax site craig on there um not seeing that shared right now so i might just want to have to redo oh, you're looking on the right correct uh, oh Dang it, it went to my other window again. Yes, there it is. Okay, so this is a, this is a firm called Remax One out in Los Angeles. And all of these are community calendars that we are populating. And when you click on one of them, you see this is Agora Hills. And these are all the events that we have provided them. And obviously you've got a lot of virtual, you see different ways service. These are all these groups. And if you look at the dates on these, it's November 1st. It's all very, very recent information. This is a demo that I, I, I call up. Mm -hmm. uh, another example here is, this is Westchester County, New York, Park Sterling Realty. Again, all sorts of community calendars. Um, and then when you click on an individual events, you see all the different stuff going on uh, in a community that comes up. And you can see, again, this is 11, 12. You've got the schools, you've got the library, environmental center, the town the farmer's market. This is all in the next 48 hours going on in a community. And yep. this information can be shared on social media very easily, um, as well as uh, put into newsletters. Final example, this is a web, another uh, uh, agent, and she has a community events pull down menu. And this information costs roughly $50 a month an agent, okay? And can be lower if you're a broker and you're pulling from our API and you're giving to a lot of agents, it gets a lot lower. So and that's on the high just, side. Just to define that, the $50 a month is not for one town. That no. includes several towns for that price, correct? Yes, it's like a 10-town bucket, okay? That, so this would be an example. You see all these towns uh, here. This is an example of what uh, someone would get for $50 a month. The, the idea is to make it very affordable, it's, and it's it's month to month after the first three months, so you don't have to be – it's not a long-term commitment. We're very comfortable that people will really like it. So this is – what the information looks like, um, we provide. And then on the website itself, when you click it, there's some details that come up and there's different ways to present it. So it's designed to give you something very thorough that can live on the web. And then this information can be shared on social media. One of the problems with social media content can be that the only way you can get information that's organized is national organization, national stuff. Some of it is good, which is like home buying trends and how to stage your house and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But if you want to just get a data feed of what's going on in your community, that doesn't, that doesn't exist. We know all the companies that do it. Yep. So there you go. So, so Craig, what else would you have me you think? Oh, and this is all, you mentioned this earlier. We, uh, we built this, uh, this is a map we put together. We were on TV with this. This is dark green means lots of community events in person, light green a little less. Clearly there's virtual still happening everywhere. This is every county in America. We have 200,000 school and community calendars 
across all 3,000 U.S. counties. I could drone on uh, about about this, but we are used. This is an information service we use in aggregate for really big companies. But back to the local level, it's really about providing you a terrific way to show off what goes on in your town and be able to uh, share it with the community. Totally. And, and it's, again, it, I, I bring in vendors and products that one, I think are great products and, and I believe in, but also when I teach marketing and I teach social media, whatever I'm teaching, um, I'm always pushing, you got to be your local community expert. You got to be the source people go to for information, whether it's about real estate or about your community. I mean, you want to be plugged in. Uh, and Dennis mentioned like, and I can tell you my own background. I mean, years ago when I used to work for the New York Times, every newspaper in the country was trying to accomplish this. They were, every newspaper was trying to be the hub of all activities and they invested millions and millions of dollars to do it. You know what I mean? Like it was so hard to do, but kudos to your wife. I mean, she's built just an amazing platform that does it at a very easy level. So get, let's so, give a, go oh, yeah, ahead. A couple, couple other things. We tend to get these live within three days. That's what we, I was going to go with. <laughs> we, we have tons of events already there, but when someone, when we go live with an agent or a firm, we always go a little bit deeper. We go out and find some of the community churches and stuff that may not already be in our database. So we always go deeper. We consult with our clients where they say, they say, Hey, can you get this chamber of commerce? You know, that's, it's in my, in the next town over, we can mix and match. We've dealt with a lot of different communities. So we know that some communities are bigger than others. Sometimes there's regional groups that you mm -hmm. want to put in every community because everyone uses them. That's one I did reference earlier. We can deploy two ways. One is a widget. And this is, this is a, this is an example of that on, on, on a page. And then the other is uh, where we just give it to you. You put it on your website, you're in business. And then the other is we work with web, uh, web developers, or you're just your firm. If you built your own website, we have an API. It's very easy to pull mm -hmm. from, to create the community content. Yep. And it's all designed to be very automated. Does that yep. make sense, Greg? Yeah, and I'll explain it kind of in layman's terms for the group. Like if you use the widget, which is basically what's called an iframe, you just plug it into your website with a line of code um, and then it's built in and your website's still wrapped around it and still looks as nice and everything. Um, but with a iframe, and don't get me wrong, it's simple, it's easy to do, it's really, really fast. Um, you don't get as much search engine value as if it's truly built in. Um, if you want it where it's really part of your site and you can even change the look and feel of it and do some custom things, that's when you would probably just need a programmer to tie into their API. So that API yeah. would allow you to pull the data from their system and make it look however you want on your website. And then again, if you really are going for the Google side of things, the search engine optimization, it would be worth a little bit of time to do that if you were to go that route. And there's no difference in price or anything for the API or the the, 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 the widget or the iframe. Which is awesome. Because I mean, usually most companies do have, and I'm talking to other vendors, do have, oh, you want to tie into our database. Now you got to pay an extra monthly fee for that yeah. and, and things like that. Uh, so Parisa just asked, um, do you have many clients in the Palm Beach County area, which is in South Florida? Not, not yet. We have about a hundred we started, we went all, we went to the NAR. That's where Craig and I met. We went to triple play. We, I was at Berkshire Hathaway, which was, I think the, one of the last trade shows and then COVID hit. So I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head, whether we have any in Palm beach. We, it's a little difficult for us to do exclusivity because, because the way the overlaps occur, mm -hmm. but obviously I'm on this call because we want to move very, very quickly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And by the way, even if someone else in your market has it, Okay. Um, I mean, the odds of two consumers going to both your websites are pretty darn low. You know what I mean, what you're really offering is your community information they can't get elsewhere. So, um, Parisa, I wouldn't, you know, even if they have a couple of customers in Palm Beach, I wouldn't worry about that. That's a big market. I mean, you're talking about the third largest uh, association in the country. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we do so. big cities as well, smaller towns. You can tell we have everything. So, yeah. And, and that's, to me, that's the beauty of your product is, Anybody can create a, create a community calendar for a big city, but the way, I mean, why don't you pull back up one of those two sites you showed either the, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and just show them, I mean, like here, you're looking at Agora Hills, which is not a big town. And then you have, you know, all those separate towns in that area in California that yeah. it's covering. Exactly. And every single one of those towns has pretty populated, you know, calendars of information and they're paying that same rate that we discussed. So exactly. 
to me, there's everyone's always looking for something different and value add. To, um, and can you show them an example of how to how to share stuff to social media? Is that something you could you easily know, these do? guys didn't do that, Craig. So what you would do is, yeah, it's, it's a little difficult to do that on a demo. But okay. they, you know, the uh, but basically what you would do is you just expand it and then click Facebook share off of this page. Um, so the uh, yeah, so I mean, we've got I've got examples in the deck of what this kind of stuff can look like. Obviously, people, people know what it what it, how it can be used. Yeah. Um, are there other questions? Um, I haven't seen. Let me check all the different chats. Um, Pierre just asked, does sharing cost more? Because I guess because no. you said that they didn't do that. No. Nope. Um, I get because they did an API, they did their own integration. They decided what features they wanted there, uh, and they did not put the social share into their own design. Yes, uh, that that's that's exactly it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Pierre, there would not be any extra cost. It would just be the same fifty dollars a month. Um, just this company decided not to do social sharing. Yeah, and, and to be clear, th theirs was a little more expensive because they have a coverage area of four million people. Um, yeah. So, so fifty dollars was the agent price. Right. Um, and that firm has five hundred agents. So, so it's a little bit of a different. They bought it at the firm level, but I think that you know the spirit of what I'm saying is. Okay. Um, Gian just asked a question, um, hyper local question. Would you be able to pull HOA events as well for communities? Yeah, so what we would need is the access to the data feed. So we can pull anything. When you say HOA, you mean uh, like a homeowners association, maybe for a large yeah, absolutely. Community. Yeah, we need access to the information. So if it's a homeowners association where it's behind a paywall or a firewall and it's not public. What we can do is we get the data feed from, say, the agent who has it. We put it into Burbio. We're fine. The question, obviously, is in, the, in the case of that, in the case of private associations, which is kind of what I would sounds like this is. The real question is: Is that allowed? I don't want to say allowed, but mm -hmm. are they comfortable with it being public? Uh, okay. You know, so we yeah. run into that issue with country clubs. Country clubs will sometimes put private events on their website. And we have to make sure that we're filtering it out. I mean, it's public. It's sitting on a website. You can find it on Google search. Yep. But they're like, oh, why, why did that end up on the local radio station? We don't do that anymore because we're conscious of it. But so the answer is we can do anything. And, and yes. So if, if you live in, if you have a town where you have commu uh, community associations, essentially, and you want to show that part off, it's very easy for us to do. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, just um, that let's say one of you signs up, you have that initial consultation with Dennis and his team. And you discuss with them here are the kind of sources I'd like you to try to see if you can pull. Then they would go do exploratory and see can we get that data? Yeah, so. we, we 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 do it all. I mean, listen, we can't do everything. If it's a if, if it's a website, the two issues we've run into is when it's behind a paywall, or if it's a website that's really old, and mm -hmm. they're slapping a PDF up because it's from two thousand. It, you know, you can't do anything with that. Yeah. But there's also without getting too far into it, there's also ways for groups to put the information on our service and then we just promote it that way. So we actually have a put your own group um, feature up that we use when we're on radio stations and stuff. Mm -hmm. Groups can put their stuff on Burbio and do every day. So there's lots of ways for us to get the information. Okay, great. Uh, Matt just asked a question. Is there a price for each county you want to show? So we typically, it typically ranges from $50 for an individual agent coverage area it's in the 50 to 75 range. When we talk about firms, um, once you get to about half a million people, it starts to be at 100 to 200. A million might be a little bit more. No, it's 100 to 200 when you talk about 500,000 to a million people. Okay. And, you know, and then we have practical conversations. When you have a big city, you don't want to show everything because there's too much. So we may only show community events, not school events, for example. Right. If there's a tiny town with 3000 people where nothing really happens, you know, so, so we have some, we have some conversations with our partners about how to filter it, but the, the, the range of a, of a county of 500,000 to a million people tends to be in the hundred to 200 dollar range. And that can be 30, 50, 75 communities typically being used by dozens, if not almost a hundred agents. So it's amortized over the, over the firm. Does that make sense? I, at least to me, it does. I don't know if, if those questions want clarification, let us know. All right. Oh, go ahead. You know, and that's a big initiative for us. And we're in conversations now with a number of CMS platforms, basically companies that build websites for perhaps many agents on this call, where 
we have an API that they can integrate and drop on your site. And as, as you said earlier, Craig, the benefit of that is SEO. Mm -hmm. And then it's a little easier to use for social sharing and things like that. But the SEO benefits are considerable because you suddenly then become a repository of all the community events. And when people do searching for that, you're at least, you're a part of that. Um, not necessarily the, the first thing that comes up, but it can be kind of fun. Yep. All right. Um, well, let me, I'm going to jump to that second one, just because it's a continuation of that one. And I'll go back to Parisa's. Um, she says, I cover eight counties in Northeast Florida as a small broker. Uh, Nat, it's not so much about small counties. Again, they're going to, like, they would discuss with you, okay, what are the different towns? What are the different areas you want us to cover? And if it's a tiny little county, there might be one counter for that county. Yeah. But if you're not, but if you're then talking about, let's say, uh, Duval County, I mean, you probably don't want one calendar for Duval. I mean, that yeah. might. No, and, and we do, we tend to do school district driven communities. That's because that's what people want. And it can vary a bit, but where, where sometimes a big school district may have three towns sending it to us and we put three towns up. Yep. And on the other hand, there may be, uh, uh, you know, one school district that covers multiple zip codes, but you really want it school district. So we've done this a lot, but when we say local, we don't mean county. I mean, listen, if that's what someone wanted, that's what we could do, clearly, okay? We're not going to say no, but really it's about the homeowner looking at, and school district centric tends to be the, the way the world works, or government centric. Those are the two ways. You know, I, I have to say, we've never really had a problem it's not in my interest to minimize problems because <laughs> this isn't a high end, this isn't an expensive product. And if I spend too long stumbling over issues, it's not worth doing. Uh, we have not really had an issue defining the communities with our agents. Typically we go, I will say another way, one of my sale, one of my guys says it is, where do you do 80% of your business? Yeah, Sometimes we say, that. you guys all know the industry, where do you sell? And they go, I sell everywhere. I mean, yes, I know. Yep. Uh, there was a time, you know, Two years ago, you sold a house 40 miles away, but where do you do 80% of your business? And that's where we tend to focus on. Yep. Um, and, and by the way, Nat just asked if you can follow up with him. He gave his phone number, so I'll make sure right. you get that. Or you should be able to right. see the chat room if you need to. Um, yeah, and this is my email here, Dennis at Burbio. Obviously, I'll follow up with anything Greg. Dennis at Burbio.com. Shoot me an email too. I'd love to hear from anyone and we can do it. It is a short demo. Yep. And I'm going to put his contact info in the... Um, in the chat room for you guys as well. Um, and I think you had your phone number there too, right? Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. Um, Liz just asked, is this being recorded? Can we get a copy? Every webinar we do at RTI is recorded, guys. So, uh, and just so you know, if you, uh, let's just say for future week's webinars, um, the way it always works is we run these every single Wednesday at three o'clock Eastern. Uh, and then if you can't catch it on Wednesday at three, Usually within 24 hours, we post the webinars onto the RETI website that you can watch on replay. Uh, and then you have up to a week to watch it if you're not a member of the site. So in other words, if you can't catch it on Wednesday, you'd have to basically the following Wednesday to catch that previous week's webinar um, by the following day. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about the end where you might want to consider getting to become a member of RETI. They get access to everything and you can go back and watch them anytime. But yes, you are going to be able to watch this one on replay by tomorrow. It'll be on the RETI site. All right, backing up a couple questions. Um, so first of all, Carmen asked, uh, missed the beginning. Are these prices weekly or monthly? They're monthly prices. So the $50 a month uh, for the agent pricing that he mentioned, uh, you said includes about 10 communities, right? That's monthly like a pack 10, and then, and then it's three months up front for setup. That's a prepayment and then month to month. So it's not a long contract. Um, we actually kept almost all our clients through COVID because we converted to virtual events. And even, even though some of them were having, you know, they weren't allowed to sell, but it's three months up front and then month to month. That's how we do it. Cause we, we know people are going to want to try it out. Okay. And then uh, Parisa asked, um, uh, NER has placed her websites. Not sure if this will work with those websites. Do you know? Um, and I'll answer that. Pretty much any website, no matter what you build it on, it doesn't matter if it's WordPress, Playster site, whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as you're able to go in and edit your own website, um, you would be able to either enter in that, um, the widget he talked about, which would be a frame, um, or if you hire a programmer, they'd be able to do the iframe on any website building platform. So this is not- yeah, and, 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 I, and I think, yes, Greg, and let me say, and then on the two things. One, yeah, it's not even really, programmer's too strong a word for the iframe. We've had the the person who sits at the desk at the office do it. It's really easy. It's not a, um, 
I will say, if you have a web developer or a company you use, and we, we're doing this all over the place, you just send them a note. Burbio has an API. Can you talk to them? And then we talk to them. You know the way this world works. If I call them, they're going to go, yeah, sure, your client's interested. Sure, my client's interested. You send them an email. We then get on the phone and we can do implementation. So you may have a, you may have a web company you're using that you don't really interface with that you want to very often. You send a note to their customer service or your sales rep there and we can talk to them directly. Yep. All right. Uh, by the way, I'm going to put all of Dennis's contact info back in the chat again. This is the way it's all together. Okay. Um, any other new questions, thoughts about this? I mean, again, to me, this fits so much into what a realtor should be doing. Um, you should be looking for something different to offer your community. You should be, be trying to be that community expert. And this helps you do a lot at a pretty good price. I mean, $50 a month is not a whole lot. Uh, Pierre just asked, can you show the examples again? Like, the two, I guess, the two different websites? Well, yeah, yeah so this is, this is an thing. example. This is an example of uh, it's Max One Properties is the name there, Max One Properties. Um, and then, um, and this is their, uh, uh, you know, I think I had all their communities up. Um, that's one. And then this is an example of uh, Park Sterling Realty. Those are two, and we've got a lot of others. And then this is Barbara Bodner, Barbara Bodner Homes for Sale. But Park Sterling Realty, the top here and then max one properties. And again, if you someone shoots me a note, I can shoot the links back to them or we can drop it into. I already did it. Okay, good. <laughs> I didn't get Barbara's, but I got the other two. I got a uh, max one realty, uh, max one properties.com slash community dash calendar. And then yeah. park sterling realty.com slash community dash calendars dot HTML. So those two exactly. are in the chat now. Great. Any else? All right. Any other questions guys? You know, the, the one thing I'll close with and at the risk of selling a bunch of salespeople, which I always say when I'm about to say something that's blatantly salespeople, <laughs> you know, people, two, two things are going on and you know this. One is because of COVID and it's going to be a tough next 60 days, I think, with regards to community activity in terms of getting out of the house. People really do want a sense of community. It's really important because it's, it, your world gets narrower and narrower with all the various restrictions. And then what is going to hit and it's, it's some of it will just be relative rather than absolute, but things are going to start to open up um, early in the spring. And depending on what part of the country you're in, maybe even a little sooner than that. And at that point, live events will start to happen a lot faster. It's going to really yeah. accelerate. And at that point, this is going to be a fabulous time. So my selling a salesperson point is if you, if we can engage and get something going in the next month or two, by the time you hit the new year, you've got this stuff and you'll be one of the first people to say, hey, listen, we I sell a community that's, and here's what's going on. Cause I think it's gonna be a, a, a fun at the risk of sounding like some cliche, uh, uh, you know, it's gonna be a very exciting time for people to be able to interact a little more. Absolutely. I, I've been saying it for a while, whenever this finally ends, we there's gonna be parties like we've never seen before. There's gonna be hug fests and, you know, conventions are gonna be just, nuts because everyone's been so cooped up for so long so I, I will finish i told you a fauci joke so my wife and i we have four kids i said one of them is a uh student at notre dame mm -hmm. and uh you know they want they beat clemson the other night which was very exciting because they didn't expect that to happen and he ran on the field he already had covid he ran on the field so that was good right he's not going to give anyone covid and then like the new york times ran this big picture tisk tisking all the students the worst part was you couldn't see him in the picture, but it was quite the joke in the house. There goes Patrick making the natural news, natural news. Anyway, well, thank okay. you very much, Craig, for, for your time. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, let me, um, absolutely. Thank you so much for everything you just did. And I see a couple people in the chat room giving even their contact info. So um, I'll make sure you, I mean, you can grab it from the chat, but also, um, you know, if you might want to follow up with those people. Yep. But let me also just kind of give everyone who's still in the room a couple of quick kind of uh, perk ideas or like, you know, perks for sticking around. Uh, and we always do this for our attendees at our webinars, um, which is if you do stay till the end, we give you some nice perks. So one of them is um, just the RATI site itself. If you have not checked out RATI, we always ask you to do us that favor. We do these webinars for free as our, uh, our good thing. And then we ask you to in return to go check out the sites. Uh, first of all, like I just mentioned, if you go to the webinar section of the sites, 
Um, the very first webinar underneath the slideshow is the previous week's webinar, and it's in chronological order. So you can go back and see every webinar we've ever done, um, or you could, for example, do it by categories or keyword search it, whatever you want to do. Um, and then the overall site of RETI, uh, if you've never checked it out again, please do so because it is an incredible site. We have you know several thousand members, but oh, of course we always need more. Um, where we have over 2,500 instructional videos, product reviews, webinars like we've done today. A lot of them are just amazing educational videos, and a lot of them are great vendors in the industry like we did with Dennis today. Uh, but you can go in into RTI and learn anything you want on all these different categories uh, in minutes. They're just short little how-to videos, a little bit longer webinars to help you really learn about real estate tech, marketing, and cybersecurity. Uh, and then if you are interested in getting an account, uh, and this promo code is right on the screen. I'm going to put it in the chat room right now as well. Uh, but if you are interested in getting an account, you can get a discount for doing so. In fact, you can be a little bit uh, ahead of this because I don't want to say I'm lazy, but I keep saying I'm going to change the promo code price and I keep forgetting to do it. Um, so what I just put in the chat room is you can get a whole year for $75. But because I still have not fixed the promo code in our system, Right now it's actually $60. So instead of paying the normal price of $100 for the year, you can get it for 60 a year, uh, which is a huge savings. I am gonna be fixing that. I swear to God, I'm gonna fix it. I keep forgetting to do so uh, by Friday because I have a big client uh, thing happening on Friday. I gotta fix it for. Uh, so if you sign up the next day or so, you could save an extra $15. But those promo codes would allow you to sign up for RTI at a pretty deep discount. And there's also a promo code if you want to try it out for a month for a dollar. That's also a big discount off the normal try it out period uh, uh, discount as well. So uh, if any of you guys do end up joining, please let us know in the chat room. We always like to welcome our new members and thank you. Uh, and let me see if I missed any questions or thoughts in the chat room. Uh, Mia is just saying you can get COVID again twice, which is not a good thing. She's saying she talked to a doctor who said it can happen. Let's hope not. Because <laughs> otherwise we're all in trouble, right? Uh, but again, any other questions, thoughts, anything, guys, either in Zoom, Facebook, anywhere else we're broadcasting? Okay. Well, if you put your info into that chat, I'll again make sure Dennis gets that information so he can follow up with you. Um, also, I'm going to recopy in his information. That way, if you do want to get a hold of him, uh, you have his info because uh, that's what this is all about. We always say, you know, take care of our sponsors and uh, the great vendors in the industry. So I just put his info back in the chat as well. So once again, it uh, doesn't seem like there's any new questions, although there's still people sticking around, which isn't a horrible thing. Uh, but if anyone has any last name things, sneak them into the chat. Otherwise, guys, look out for next week's webinar. Uh, before we go on that whole Thanksgiving break. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Greg. All right. No problem. Thank you, Dennis. Bye-bye.